As a Java developers or software engineer, we hear about Spring Boot and how it is so helpful in developing fine-grained production application for Java. So what is in fact Spring Boot? What is the main components and concepts behind it? In this video, we are going to have overview to see the whole image of Spring Boot. Then later we will get into more details. So let's start it by what is Spring Boot. Spring Boot is an open source Java-based framework used to build standalone and production-ready Spring application as well to create microservice and enables you to develop enterprise ready applications that you can just run if you reach this video so at least you have overview of spring framework in general and how it's working from the core perspective the other frameworks under spring framework because spring itself is a framework of frameworks which has several frameworks covering areas such as web development database communication monitoring messaging clouds and more so before getting deep into spring boot concepts of working let's have a quick look over what is microservices and what makes them fit into Spring Boot. Microservice is an architecture that allows the developers to develop and deploy services independently. Each service running has its own process, dependencies, database communication, or some external calls. And this achieves a lightweight model to support business applications. By this way, you can divide your application into smaller applications or services for fast, easy, and testable individually. After that, you can communicate between the microservices over HTTP calls for example this architecture fits well in social media e-commerce etc this architecture replaced already the old style of monolithic application what what is monolithic applications monolithic application is also architecture where you develop all of the application in one big service self-contained and independent it has everything in one place from database to front end it is maintained and deployed as a whole application not as separate services as microservice it is getting more complicated to maintain it with more functionality implementation during the lifetime of the application that increase the complexity the stability and productivity of the application that's why nowadays we got microservices for easy to avoid all this complexity which i had mentioned for sure each architecture has a downside and upside so you can please have a search online to find which one is which but in fact we are already heading towards microservice a long time ago even it's extremely rare when you find someone is still developing monolithic application so let's back to Spring Boot itself. Some advantages from using Spring Boot such as building a standalone Spring application. It has embedded web servers such as Tomcat, Jetty. No need to deploy your WAR file. You just build a jar file with everything inside the application and just run it. Provides opinionated starter dependencies to simplify your build configuration, dependency management, version control, automatically configuring Spring and third party libraries whenever it's possible. Provide production ready features such as metrics, health check, and externalized configuration as well. Absolutely no code generation and no requirement for XML configuration. Emphasizing the convention over configuration approach to make it easy for rapid development for almost all the cases, except if you need to configure a certain library yourself. For example, if you need a standard web server, you don't need to configure it from the beginning. Print Boot will provide it to you out of the box, so you can later on customize it if you want or use it as it is. Print Boot provides you with four main features or component which emphasizing the convention over configuration approach we are going to list them in this video and having an overview of them also in this video right now such as spring boot project starter dependencies automatic configuration command line interface and actuator let's start with starter dependency starter is a set of related dependencies libraries tagged under a single banner serving a specific purposes of development such as if you want web starter security database etc you still have the flexibility to add your own dependency as well in the pom.xml file but most of the time the starter has a sufficient collection of dependencies to meet your requirements starters are so valuable because also they protect you from version conflicts when you develop applications that need different dependency from different places because already spring starter will take care of updating the dependencies to the latest version as well that protects you from security issues related to outdated dependencies it makes the development easier and rapid because you don't need to search everywhere for what dependencies you do need everything is already under one starter for the specific job Spring Boot has a parent starter which provides a default configuration to use in your application all Spring Boot projects using it as a parent in their pom.xml file you can even build your own starter this is usually used when you want to build your own auto configuration dependency which will take us now to the second component of Spring which is automatic 
automatic configuration. Automatic configuration it is attempt to auto configure certain part of the application depends on the provided dependency or starter which you can find them later in your class path. For example, if you add H2 databases to your POM file, Spring automatically is going to detect it and auto configure it for you. So you don't need to configure it the same with web server, for example, such as Tomcat, Jetty, etc. If Spring finds a library in its class path, it will try to auto configure for you, but also you still have the chance to customize this configuration as you need. Whether you are using application properties, YAML file, or annotation based configuration in Java class. So that's make it so easy to not worry about configuring uh, dependencies if you are satisfied with the default configuration which Spring provides to you. Nowadays, Spring automatically enabling auto configuration for you. You can even find that when you go to your main class, when you have a Spring application, you'll find the annotation at Spring Boot application over your main class or any other configuration class. If you hover over the annotation and you're getting into the class declaration, you can find that it's already configuring everything for you. As you can see, auto configuration is here and as well component scan annotation to detect any Spring component and to register it as a Spring bean for later use. As we mentioned, Spring have an auto configuration for almost everything. But if you want, you still have the chance to build your own auto configuration as well. But how can you do that auto configuration by yourself? First of all, you will create, for example, a Maven project and then you will write your own configuration class, adding your own POM file containing the libraries which you want to auto configure so other developer can use it without the necessity from them to configure it. Also, you will register your configuration class in the Spring.Factories file which under your library resources meta end folder. After that, you can build your library then share it with others to use. So Spring will detect it as an auto configuration library and will treat it as a starter library for itself. The benefits of that approach in case you have your own specific configuration in your project and you want to standardize the use of the specific library configuration across multiple microservices maybe you will not do that on a daily basis but it's good to know that you can build your own auto configuration we will cover the building of your own auto configuration in other video so stay tuned or you can even search online if you stuck and you will find a lot of tutorials about that as well command line interface is a way to quickly prototype a spring application using groovy scripts but production grade application are rarely created using spring command line interface you don't need to use the command line to work with the Spring Boot, but it is a quick way to get a Spring application of the ground without an IDE. You can download the Spring command line distribution for manual installation by following the instruction in the install.txt file. After downloading it, you can set up your command line interface for Spring in Windows, for example, or you can install it with SDK Man. The software development kit manager can be used for managing multiple versions of various libraries SDKs, including Groovy and the Spring Boot command line if you are on a Mac and use Homebro, you can install the Spring Boot command line interface as well. The Actuator. Actuator allows you to add monitoring, management, and analyzing support for your application in production. It exposes various HTTP or GMX endpoints that you can interact with. For development, usually it exposes the internal runtime operation information such as beans configured in the Spring application context, Spring Boot's auto configuration, available environment via system and configuration properties and the like, trace of the recent HTTP request, a matrix of memory usage, garbage collection, data source usage or web requests as well, and a lot more. To use Actuator, you need to add the dependency of Actuator Starter in your Spring application. Actuator allows you to enable or disable endpoints depends on the sensitivity of the information exposed, as well integrating it with the Spring security to control who sees what. Along with the standard endpoints provided by the Actuator, you can implement your custom endpoint depends on your need for that metrics or info to be exposed and analyzed. Some of the main endpoints of actuator such as beans endpoint to retrieve the beans used by the application, health endpoint provides detailed information about the health of the application, info endpoint provides general information about the application, metrics endpoint provides access to application metrics, sessions endpoints provides information about the application HTTP session that are managed by Spring session and a lot more you can check them on Spring official documentation as well. So that video was a high overview of Spring Boot under the hood. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos so we can have a deeper look into these concepts in more details. I hope that I was able to cover the introduction of Spring Boot and what it is under the hood. So thank you so much for your time watching this video.
Sergio. Peace be upon you.